Ooh, we've got a pollinator. Haha, <laughs> at least we got that one on camera in case we get a seed pod. Wouldn't that be amazing? So having my Catlia guatemalensis bloom like this is such a welcome surprise that she gets her own video to honor and thank her for delivering against all odds. Because if you are on the fence about buying this XXL size orchid because you may think that your conditions are nowhere near ideal but you have the space, this video will help you decide to get this orchid because let me tell you, during the critical time period when this orchid is preparing to bloom, my conditions are less than ideal. Ideally, the care requirements for this primary hybrid are no matter the media, no matter the setup, temperatures no lower than 18 degrees Celsius and no higher than 25 degrees Celsius, water and fertilize in accordance to the size of the orchid, doing so abundantly during active growth. Keep in bright shade at all times and once the growths have matured, flush regularly and then wait for the blooms. Pretty straightforward fits into the care for the majority of all Cattleyas out there. Meanwhile, being a bifoliate, it is easy to side-eye this orchid because of the reputation bifoliates have for being fussy. Well, I'm here to tell you that this orchid is not fussy at all, and I'm not giving it the care that it requires during the most important phase of its growth, which, if we want an orchid to bloom, is during the phase that it is preparing to bloom. What do I mean by that? If you are new to my channel, welcome. Yes, I am in southern Spain, so why am I putting my light exposure into question? If you have been with me throughout the past years, you already know what I mean. So to clear things up for anyone who doesn't know, this orchid lives indoors from mid-November through to end of April because she won't survive the low temperatures that my outdoor environment would throw at her. And while I have all the trimmings of artificial lighting and I could heat my winter orchid holding station, I do not switch lights on anymore nor do I heat the space because that's not in the budget anymore. So if you're on the fence about getting this orchid, let me tell you, if you have the space to accommodate the size, this has got to be the most rewarding bifoliate that I have in my collection so far. This orchid has to tolerate low temperatures of 14 degrees Celsius at night, and that could be night after night after night, and sometimes during the day as well, especially when it is overcast and no light comes into the grow space. She is also in Lekka and self-watering. There is that added factor of evaporative cooling because of the media, which cools the roots down by another three degrees approximately. And her pot is on a marble floor. While I have cardboard to buffer between the cold floor and the pot, still, her size makes it impossible for me to have her on a shelf, so more of the cold gets in and around her root system. That is a lot of cold without any equaling out of some kind of warmth during the winter days. Then, the biggest influence for any orchid to bloom, well, is light. Without light, we usually get a poor blooming at best or lack of fragrance. When I say poor blooming, I refer to the bloom count being lesser and lackluster or the vibrancy of the color of the blooms if they had plenty of light. With low light, they wouldn't be as vibrant. Usually, though, we get no blooming. So, <laughs> now you see the point of my video because the past two winters, this orchid has delivered and she has delivered to a degree that I can tell is no different as to when she bloomed in the spring after she had warmth and supplemental light during the winter months. The light this orchid gets in my grow space is minimal even on sunny days, but during the winter we have many overcast days. And on sunny days, I do not carry her outside the way I do my other orchids orchids as I try to take advantage of the sunny days to give my collection some light to work with, this orchid, because of her size, stays in her place until the night temperature steady to a 17 degrees Celsius in spring, which is now. And we are at the end of April. And yet look at this spectacle. I just cannot. Her colors are as vibrant as they were the first time she bloomed in my care. I was so taken by the color of the blooms of this orchid when I saw her for the first time on a video from the orchid room, I had to have her. So yes, once again, another orchid that is precious to me because she reminds me of the orchid room. Because you see, her blooms are not pink, they are not orange, they are a mix of the two, and I like to call this color coral. It has such a tropical vibe about it, especially when you see what is going on in the lip. 
add the pixie dust on the petals and sepals, the bloom count on each spike, and fragrance, you ask? Oh, yes. Despite the conditions she tolerates during my winter, she is also fragrant when she blooms. If you like the smell of sweet roses, this is definitely an orchid you would enjoy. She does, however, need a certain amount of warmth to exude that fragrance. Not sun, but warm temperatures will increase the intensity of the fragrance. So, bit by bit, I'm hoping to get a little more out of that from her without having to get so close to the blooms to appreciate it. J'adore! Bottom line is j'adore. I have another three weeks of this gorgeous show in my blooming alley. However, I do have some signs of cold stress, but considering I have other bifoliates that have lost roots, cannot be repotted at the best timing, seeing as they grow roots during the winter, the evaporative cooling effect of the media has done a number on them, and they are in rescue mode for 2023 and many, many years to come. But the Guatemalenses? I am so impressed. For such a large bifoliate to be able to handle what could be considered conditions that are polar opposite of what she needs to bloom, I'm here to tell you once again, don't believe what you read on the internet about the care of this orchid. Speaking of which, my care is as follows, as mentioned, when the temperatures are a steady 17 degrees at night, out she comes to live in my blooming alley, whether in bloom or not until it is time to bring her in again, usually mid-November. My day temperatures during this time period can get up to 40 degrees Celsius. Eh, doesn't happen often, can happen. My humidity, however, is super duper low. I average about 30% humidity. Having said all that, end of April, didn't I just mention that the night temperatures are 17 degrees and steady? <laughs> that is what we're going to do together today. Bring her outside, put her in her place, but we have to clear out the lower shelf to make room for her because I have my perparatas currently occupying her space. <laughs> anyway, during the winter, as mentioned, I do not move her, and while I would like to flush her more often, I can't because of her size. The grow space is a bit of a tight squeeze and knocking other orchids over while I maneuver this one around, that is too risky. So for the sake of keeping many orchids safe, she gets flushed where she sits. Meaning, I let the reservoir go bone dry before filling it with plain RO water again. But then I only leave the reservoir to half of the capacity. And yes, that water stays in the reservoir, contrary to what I do with all my other orchids after I flush them. So. Her flush is nothing but filling the reservoir where she sits with plain RO water. I hate doing that. It really goes against everything that I prefer to do when I talk about flushing my orchids, but the circumstances determine how I go about things with her. So today is a happy day for me and my Guatemalenses because it is her first full generous flush of 2023, which I will be doing one time per week from here on in, leaving our water with 500 parts per million of seaweed in the reservoir because I'm boosting the hormone activity at the base of the orchid at this point. Seeing as she is in the blooming phase of her growth cycle, the hormones within the orchid are being mobilized to the base and well, now is the time to give her a hormone boost to get those eyes swelling and moving. Once I see that happen, I'm going to supplement with 500 parts per million of calcium nitrate, and then I will switch to my fertilizer, which also will be at a concentration of 500 parts per million, which will go into the reservoir every time the previous solution has been absorbed. I used to only give her 300 parts per million, but as mentioned in my plan ahead video, this is the year that my large orchids are getting a higher concentration of fertilizer to support the size that they have grown to. Seeing as I have lost so many orchids, I do not need to consider dividing the ones I have left as much anymore, just because my grow space is limited. I'm able to now focus on allowing orchids that I choose to grow, meaning my fertilizer levels are also going to increase to match what I'm hoping to achieve. Anyway, in the blooming alley, she will get the bright shade that she would like to have all year round. Now that she has bloomed for me consecutively two times after two stressful winters not showing any signs of weakening, this orchid deserved a video all of her own and well, Shall we get her into her designated space in the blooming alley? While I get her situated, I would so appreciate it if you would like the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so, and thank you if you have already done that without me prompting you to. I appreciate your support so, so much. 
Okay, Guatemalenses, you beauty, you're up. Let's go. You are going to love this. Oh boy, she's heavy. <laughs> There, job done. Blooming Alley. <laughs> a fitting place. What do you think? Huh? Blooming Alley? I will do a little bloom tour. Not in this video. This was about the gorgeous Guatemalenses. And I hope that you enjoyed seeing some amazing coral carlo blooms. Unfortunately, I could not share the fragrance with you in real time while I was working with the orchid. I hope that you got a pretty good idea. And if you can picture sweet roses, if you've smelt a sweet rose, well, that is the Guatemalensis for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I still have a lot of work to do before everything is set for the season. Orchids are where they should be. We'll get to that. The video should air hopefully sometime next week. <laughs> have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.